Welcome to Composing My Life, the cathartic musings of a blurred believer. I'm your host, Writing Miles. On this podcast, I share some thoughts on life and other things in hopes to inspire and encourage you, the listener, to live a more full, vibrant, and excellent life. In this episode, I just want to share a little bit more about me so you guys kind of understand who, who I am, who I am as this podcaster, as this content creator individual. And I also want to exp- explain something that, in like the title and the tagline thing, Blurred Believer. Okay. I'm sure if you've been on the internets anywhere, you've heard the term blurred. Or as I was debating between um, using blurred or bleak, which I think I, I think I personally prefer bleak. It just seems cool. Bleak, a bleak. But a blurred or bleak or is just a black nerd or a black geek. So am I really a blurred? Am I really a bleak? I was really think. sorry, my stomach is growling. Stomach is growling. Hungry. Um, <laughs> but um, am I blurred? Am I bleak? And um, sometimes I wrestle with that, especially since this term has become more prominent and more popular now, which I think is amazing, is absolutely cool. Because I mean, there's, there has always and always has been black nerds and black geeks. It just wasn't a thing. And I think also over time, it actually actually became its own thing because black people have their own style. Like even when it comes to nerdy and geeky stuff, we have our own, you know, swagger about how we even deal with nerdy stuff, how we deal with uh, whether it's anime or comic books or movies or anything. You can be a blurred or oblique about almost anything. And we got our own style and our own way of looking at things and even looking at these topics and nerd them and geek them with our own perspective, which would varies from person to person. I'm sure if, you know, if you're of Latinx descent, you look at comics and movies stuff differently. If you're somebody from Asia as a, as a whole, <laughs> um, you look at that culture differently too. You know, everybody has a different perspective. And I think here in the United States, sure, the general term nerd or geek and most of everything in our culture comes from the white gaze or a white perspective. But again, as a blurred or as a bleak, we look at things a little bit differently. And so for me, yeah, I think I've been a blurred or a bleak all of my life. And which I think is kind of funny because I don't, I don't think my, I don't think my um, parents really wanted me to be. <laughs> I mean, I don't think you can really stop anybody, stop anybody from being, you know, interested in the things that they're interested in. And um, I think my family as a whole was really into sports and stuff more than, say, anime or cartoons or video games or just technology as a whole. Um, but. I didn't really follow that trend. <laughs> and I think that's cool though, because I mean, diversity and stuff like that is important and it helps expand our horizons. Because I think there, 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 there has definitely been times where I've shared things with my family um, from this geek culture that um, they enjoy and they appreciate. Like my parents, I know they appreciate that I know things about like AV and computers and stuff because every time I visit them, I always have to help them with something. Something is broken with their internet or the computer or the sound bar doesn't work anymore and the sound is only coming from the TV or it's only coming from one speaker. And so (laughs) they benefit from my geekdom and my my tech savvy stuff. But yeah, like I'm definitely blurred. I'm definitely a a bleak. Um, I think one of the reasons that I hesitate sometimes to own that is because I'm not as go hard as a lot of other blurs and bleaks. Like, I still, I still want to go to a con. Like, it's one of my goals. (laughs) Whether um, it's virtual or in person. Ideally, I want it to be in person. Um, But I want to go. I don't even, I don't know. I've thought about maybe even dressing up one time. I don't know what I would dress up as. But me and my wife have definitely talked about that. We want to go to a con just to engage and be part of the culture. Because there's so many cool stuff there. Like, it's its own little world that, as of late, I think, um, 
has become super popular, super popular. But I enjoy it. And I, I think the things that I enjoy the most are probably anime, definitely cartoons. Like all of my childhood, I was really just watching cartoons. Like Cartoon Network, when it came out, and I think it was 90, 1997, we had that. We got it, you know, and it's a blessing. But um, I would watch it all the time. I would watch it all the time. And that was before they started making like super original stuff. Like it was Looney Tunes, Tex Avery cartoons, and like all these old stuff back to back, just over and over and over and over again. You know, then eventually they started, you know, cartoon, cartoon, or what a cartoon, and started introducing new and original content, like your Dexter's, your uh, your Dexter's Laboratory, your Powerpuff Girls, your Johnny Bravo, um, stuff like that, you know, and also like cartoons on Nickelodeon as well. So of course, you, you know, Rugrats, uh, All Real Monsters, uh, Doug, stuff like that, you know, Rocco's Modern Life, Ren and Stimpy. It's just, I don't know. I don't know. Like, and then anime, when I get introduced to anime, took a whole different level, whole different level, you know, like the art was different. The experiences were different. It was more intense. And of course, you know, you have your, I would say your like big two of anime culture is Dragon Ball Z and Sailor Moon. There are tons of other great animes out there, but I think for most kids, in the 90, 90s, in, in the ni- 1990s or whatever, I have a hard time saying that, 90s, 90s, um, Dragon Ball Z and Sailor Moon. It was like either or. I mean, I'm sure you could enjoy both, but those were definitely big ones. And of course, you had like Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! came later, and all sorts of other shows. Um, but yeah, you know, those, are, those are usually, the, in my mind, those are the big, the big two. And so I remember one time stumbling across Princess Mononoke on, it was like on Showtime or something like that. I don't, I can't remember, but catching like the very end of it or like 10 minutes of it. And I was like, yo, what is this? And just seeing that snippet of it was imprinted in my mind. I was like, yo, I got to find this. This has to be somewhere. And eventually, you know, I find out, found out what the movie was and watched it from beginning to end. And I was like, yo, this is amazing. And this was, I didn't didn't even, I don't even think I was fully, fully into anime yet. Um, You know, really geeking out about it and trying to explore more of Japanese culture and stuff like that. But seeing that, Mononoke Hime, yo, that joint changed the game. And of course, you know, it, it just, goes deeper and farther from there, you know, because there, there's so many different animes and movies and shows out there. But um, yeah, you know, just over time, just being so interested in that culture, so interested in different aspects and the stories that are being told in animation and in anime, and of course, movies too. Like, I remember seeing The Matrix three times in theaters when it came out and just loving it. I was like, yo, did this stuff? This the bullet time? What? This is absolutely amazing. You know? And again, I'm grateful that now blurred or bleak culture is a thing. And it's become more commonplace. And I think for a lot of for, for some people, you know, it was something you had to hide. Like even now, in shows like Stranger Things, depicting, you know, the main characters playing Dungeons and Dragons. Like during that time in like the 80s and stuff like that, people, that wasn't popular. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't as commonplace as it is now for a whole show to be loosely hinged on that. You know, like that wasn't a thing. And I mean, I could be absolutely wrong, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't. Like, yeah, you had your Trekkies, you had people that were into Star Wars, and then, you know, you had people play Dungeons and Dragons. But the idea of being a nerd or being a geek was not cool at all. And, you know, in the past, I don't know, 10, 15 years, it's definitely become a more, it's become more of an acceptable, quote unquote, acceptable thing to be or to claim to say, yeah, I'm a geek, I'm a nerd, I'm a blurred, I'm a bleak. And it's like, oh, okay, it's not a bad thing, but I'm glad because there's so much in geek culture that has influenced the culture as a whole that I think people just need to embrace. Hey, I mean, why not? It's cool. It's cool. And so I like being a bleak. 
I like being a blurred because there's so much to enjoy. <laughs> you know, there's so much to enjoy in regards to entertainment and um, just the influence that it's had. Like even because, again, you can be a blurred or you can be bleak about a lot of other stuff. Like there are music geeks out there that are really into it. Like I think my wife is a music geek. Like I thought I really liked music, but my wife, she loves music. <laughs> like there are some people that are just really into into it, you know, and I, I, I feel bad because there are a lot of times where my wife and I, she'll be sharing songs with me. She's like, have you heard this song before? Or like, don't you know this song? And I'm like, no, I don't. And it's because I didn't really start officially paying attention to music and the music that I was consuming until sometime in high school. Like there's this joke that I have that my, my friend who's Indian um, introduced me to hip hop. Which I think is funny because, you know, whatever the assumption, I'm a black guy, he's an Indian guy. And, um, but in, in high school, I didn't really pay attention to music, um, until I got around friends and we started talking about it. And then also I started learning how to produce my own music. Then I started paying attention to it. I started paying attention to a particular artist and this and that or whatever. And, uh, so I, when I'm talking to my wife, I like I, I try to tell her it's like, yeah, I'm behind, and sometimes it feels like it's impossible <laughs> to even be able to catch up. But geekdom is everywhere in every form and fashion, and I'm glad people are embracing it. Embrace your geekdom, embrace your nerddom, because it's cool. It's cool. It's cool to know stuff. It's cool to be in the know of things that other people might not be in the know of. Not in a snooty way, but, you know, it adds conversation so that when you go to talk to somebody about something, you have something special to give, and they have something special to give to you. It's great. It's a nice mixing pot, and there's nothing wrong with that, you know, of just sharing ideas, sharing experiences, and things like that. It's beautiful. It's beautiful in my mind. I, I, I just think it is. I think it is. And so, in regards to being a blurred believer, that just means I'm a Christian. <laughs> I just, I believe in God. I believe in Jesus Christ, uh, that he died on the cross for me and rose from the grave. And that when you um, confess your sins and trust in him, he saves you so that you can live um, for his glory and for the good of others to do good works, you know, and it gives you access to him, relationship with him and um, security for life after death. You know, so it's two things. That's why I put it in there, blurred believer, because one, I'm giving you giving you my perspective as a black nerd or black geek, but I'm also giving you my perspective as a Christian, as a believer. And, you know, I'm still, I use the word believer instead of Christian because there's some things that Christians do that I don't like. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest with you. And that's stuff, I'm, you know, I plan on talking about on the podcast. But those are my perspectives. That's where I'm coming from. I'm a black geek that loves Jesus. You know? So yeah. Thanks for listening to the show. Be sure to subscribe on YouTube and wherever you consume your podcasts. So Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever. This is Writing Miles. Keep composing your life of vibrant excellence one day at a time. And make sure to have fun while you're doing it. <laughs>